Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. I think I probably should do a quick introduction of myself. Maybe some of you still remember me. I played uh, lady singles for Germany, represent Germany for many years and participated in um, Olympic Games and European Championships and World Championships. So I specialize in lady singles. Um, of course, I played a bit differently from traditional Chinese style and European style. So I'm a, a bit, I mix up both. So I hope I can contribute something and I want to share my experience with you. Um, shall I go ahead? Yeah. Hi, uh, good evening everybody. And uh, my name is Hong Yan Pi. And uh, like Huai Wen, I was former Chinese player and played for France since 2002. And then, um, yeah and uh, been for like over 10 years in France and uh, as a national player and I played for France for the Olympics and uh, get a medal from the World Championships. And uh, also I've been uh, training a little bit in Denmark and I've played in the Danish League and then I yeah, get some different cultures in my badminton career. So it was a pleasure to sharing uh, the experience with you and uh, to talk about the lady single with you tonight. Okay, um, the, talk, the, top, the topic for today is the women's singles nowadays. Um, I retired in 2009. Since then, uh, the game, ladies' singles game has changed quite a bit. So um, to compare the difference, I want to say, how, I would just want to give you a quick information what we did before. So um, before we build up as women's singles, we build up for our attacking for our attack with a lot of clears and drops, which uh, has, I would say, we have uh, better accuracy than the nowadays. Maybe the game is a bit slower than now. The rallies are a bit shorter because the level, the level gap between the players from different countries are a bit bigger. Now, from you see from European countries, there are still Many talented players, they come through and then they, they can play with long rallies. They are very consistent. They are very physical. Um, also, before, when Hong Yan and I were competing, uh, there were seldom you see women singles who use backhand serve, mostly forehand serve, high serve. Now, you see a mixture of forehand and backhand serve. And nowadays, I think there are more uh, playing style, style of play. There's some of them are really attacking players. They can be really, really aggressive. I remember I, in old days, there's uh, some players when they don't, they are struggling, they don't know what to do. They always try to play around and build up, be patient. Nowadays, some players, they can do really just attacking, just hit everything down and come forward and come really high. They can push. They can do, put a lot, of thing, a lot of blocks to the middle to counter, which you rarely see in the women's singles before. And before, when we were competing, or maybe because of our height, so we try to use the different height of the clears to counter their attack. Now, because nowadays we see, especially from videos, the games are really, really fast. So the clears, there's almost the same height. Either punching clear, a lot of punching clears. Seldom you see the high, like defensive clears to give yourself more time to return to the center to prepare for the defense. Um, um, before we played more net, right? We, yeah. we, we did a lot of net swings, cross net, a lot of deceptions. Now you see some of them are still doing that, but I think the trend, the tendency is that they try to push the shuttle away from the net. So your opponent has get smaller angle and they can't really push you or do a tight net swing that you can't, you can't lift or um, it's harder for them to do the cross. So that's what we found. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty much from before. Now, um, the speed and the consistency are very, very crucial for ladies' singles. Everyone, 
if you want to compete with top athletes, top lady singles, um, the first thing you need to have is the speed and the consistency. Because you need to play long, long, long rallies with speed. Because even you can play hundreds of strokes, but without speed, that won't help you. Um, the gap of players becomes smaller, as I spoke before. Um, the matches become much more physical, and because the players become physically stronger. Because I think maybe developing a player now, the focus is a bit more different. Because uh, as we always say in China, speed goes first. Uh, quite the Precision. sharpness Precision. and uh, quite uh, the accuracy. Variation. Um, and the precision, precision and the variation. So these are the orders we have. However, now I think maybe the, de the way you develop the, the, the players is probably first physical. Then you still need to have technique to control. So that's, uh, the game has changed and it has improved a lot. And it's, it's very, very challenging for all the players. Um, and all the attacking shots, they are more aggressive. They are not as accurate as before, but the, the follow-ups after smash to the net is much quicker than before. And the girls are able to jump high and smash. They implement a lot of uh, uh, men's style into the women's games. So it makes the women's singles more, that's why it becomes yeah. more physical. Um, yeah, we can the, even observe some of the players jumping from side to side to smash and then le le almost like double the kind of jumping to side to side and smash and even jumping one step jumping to the yeah, backhand. So to intercept and to continue keep the attacking, yeah, right. keep the pressure. Right. It's yeah. talking about backhand serve because before there were not so many players to, to use backhand service because, well, we all can do a short serve pretty well, but the challenging of flicking is there because it's very hard because you, you stand a bit more behind the court and it's a, a lot more challenging to, to flick to the rear court. But nowadays, I think a lot of girls can do that, so they probably feel better. Um, Jump smash, more side frame. Um, so you need to be more... And also, I, what we found is that nowadays the players are more all around. You can't say they are probably not very good at defense, not very good in offense. They are more all around. So it's very hard to tackle any weaknesses. Um, for, exa for example, PV Sindhu is going to be the targeting person we study. We found it's quite difficult to play against her because she's physically very strong, very, she has good endurance, right? Yeah. So she's pretty good in defense and offense, so it's quite difficult. So the reason we choose Sindhu is because she, her playing style repre represents the trend of, of, of playing style nowadays. So Hong Yen, I'm gonna pass it to Hong Yen. Hong Yen's gonna analyze the game of uh, PC, uh, PV Sindhu. As well and said that uh, Sindhu is uh, a player who is uh, a really powerful and strong physical. She's big, she can reach big court and uh, she's a uh, good endurance and uh, have a really good speed on the court when she's playing. So it's really difficult to find a tactical against her. Uh, if you are not fast enough, if you're not uh, physical, powerful enough or strong enough. So we are um, trying to find some solution here to, to say, but uh, Sindhu, she's, um, uh, how you say, she, she's a um, player, very offensive. She's trying to make a pressure uh, in the clears, punch clears, very flat clears, and then she, then she get a chance to uh, smash. So when you give her back a shorter clears, and then she's trying to make a smash and uh, go forward and to keep the pressure, even pushing you from the net and keep, you know, more and more speed on the, on the, um, yeah, on the her hacking shots. Um, um, but she also have, she have so many good points and strong um, points, but she also have some weakness. She's big, so she have a little bit difficult to reach and she, her balance is high, so she's difficult to bench to go into the net and to get changing direction. 
So that's some of them because of her. Yeah, she's big, and um, um, she and we observed that um, also when you gave certain height when you lift and your clears, then she's not that aggressive anymore. She's trying to just be patient, clears and drops. And her drops is not that sharp. Actually, it's not that dangerous as her attacking shots. So, um, so here, um, uh, and also she's uh, a little bit, don't like the defending close to the body when smashed to her. We, I, actually, we, we analyzed her game, and yesterday we, we saw her game against the, uh, the Hong Kong girl. Yeah, and then, yeah. uh, actually, uh, we saw that as um, the Hong Kong girl did really good tactical against her, and until the end, maybe a little bit lucky or something. And then she's, um, yeah, lose the third set. The Hong Kong girl cannot keep the same speed as she does in the, in the first and the second set, and the Shindu goes up. But, um, but the tactical, what the Hong Kong girl does, it was really exactly what we analyzed and what is, I think it's the, the way to play against this kind of player. So, um, uh, so today uh, we will try to uh, do some exercises uh, in here with those players and um, to, uh, to see how we can find the uh, tactical to, to resolution and to get some yeah, solution to get this kind of top player when they make a very uh, much pressure in the game, in the clears, in the smashes. So we were trying to find a solution. We have two exercises to, to try, as an example, there can be, be another, meaning another ones, but uh, we, we try, choose the two exercises and uh, the player will doing it and show you that we will. Um, for, um, first, Hua Wen, she will uh, doing the first exercise with the player, and I'm trying to make a second one. So um, both exercises is more like a defensive, and yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, just want to repeat we, uh, the weaknesses and strong points of Sindhu. She, what her uh, habit is that she attacks a lot from a, can you please stop a little bit? Um, she attacks quite a lot from the round head corner to yeah, yeah. cross court to the cross court to the backhand side. Could you yeah. please uh, change ends? Yeah. Doing um, a lot of sorry about that. Um, she smashes a lot from a round head corner to the backhand side, and she um, smashed straight from the forehand. A right. lot of smash straight from the forehand. Forehand straight. So the objective of this exercise for us to find the right height for, for Ip's lift. So that will limit, can we, can we stop a little bit so I can focus? <laughs> I forgot what I want to say. Well, anyway, so the objective of the exercise is for Yip to practice the lift that will limit Sindhu's attacking shots. So as Hong Yan explained, um, when you lift too high and give a lot of time to her, she has enough time to smash. Her smashes are strong and very fast. But if you lift flat, she's going to smash really quickly. So the one way that you can get her into trouble is to find the right height. This is the height of uh, flight uh, tra trajectory. Sorry, new vocabulary. Yeah. So <laughs> that's trajectory. Yeah. Because everyone is different. If I lift, trajectory. yeah, lift the shots to Hong Yan, it should be flatter. If I lift the sh uh, lift uh, to um, Holly, it should be a bit higher. So she needs to find a way to lift right behind her, but don't give her enough time to attack. So the girls are gonna drop to two to, uh, to the front court two corners and smash to her backhand side. What Sindhu does is that she smashes and rush forward really quickly, especially for, especially straight. So we will let her not block straight. If she, the smash from, is from straight, she's not allowed to block straight. The worst she can do is the middle or cross. By, by doing cross, we can keep her twist and turned. Right? So, by taking the drop, it, 
is able to is allowed to do cross. This is another shot. She doesn't like it because you still keep her twisted and turned. So this is the exercise. They are attacking these uh, two front corners and smash to the backhand side. So you can see this and the different heights. Observe the, the, the height that she's doing, what the difference can make. Okay, could you please stop? So I have a question to you guys. What do you think about this lift? What do you think? Any? any? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> not high enough and they're not deep enough. Yeah, give another go. Okay, just move a bit forward after your attacking shots. Move forward. These are better. So can you please stop? So what do you think about now? Is it better? Sorry? Could you? She box not straight. Straight. That should be going cross. So what, from that angle, uh, maybe give, uh, when we ask a question, can, can he get a, uh, yeah, mm, Miko? Microphone up to to answer. Thank you. Yeah. I'm Reiner from Estonia. It's not like a question, but I was just noticing that she's not trying to make the cross uh, straight smashes go to the center or cross. Um, so I have a question to you. Do you find that the exercise is hard for you to block cross? Sorry, can we have the microphone again? Because sometimes I cannot control the shuttle, maybe sometimes it's not too high, or sometimes it's uh, cannot maybe pushing enough, enough the shot. That's why maybe it's easy for her to smash. That's why I'm not easily, also you not easily to put the cross or uh, to the between. That's why I have to, uh, like, like she say, I have to find which way of the height is the better for me to control, to make her not easily to smash or not easy to hey, use the other nice uh, dropping, smash, anything. I can, like, defend also have, uh, have, I can like to, no need to make her to not easy to do anything. Try to find that way, I think. I think it's really important we understand that uh, um, 
we have to make the player to understand which height is a good height for to get your Poland in difficult. That's the most difficult thing. Player, they need to time to get a, find the right, um, to understand in which height I should play. If, it's, if my height is too low or, or too high, this one high, uh, height for, is difficult for play for everybody. I mean, not comfortable for attacking, but which one height uh, is the right one? So the player have to find themselves, and a coach can give them also some. Um, um, uh, how do you say? Uh, to target. Uh, the target. Yeah, to to give it. Yeah, because these different people different height. <laughs> That's what I have to find. Yeah, it's yeah, difficult yeah. because she's tall, and also she's not moving forward. Um, it's quite challenging exercise. It's because um, the reason I have to ask her is because I want to 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 see how comfortable she feels and if this exercise is working. Because if she thinks there are too many corners to cover for her, then she won't be able to, to focus on her lift and on her defense. I, I might have to mod, uh, modify the exercise a bit. So that's why I constantly I have to check with her. Um, maybe this exercise would work with someone else. Maybe, maybe today you're not in a good shape or whatever. You, you really need to uh, check with your uh, players firstly. And secondly is that um, for players who are not able to do that yet, probably I will modify this really, do this exercise really with fixed pattern. Say you just drop forehand, lift to the, same, to the uh, round head corner and get smash cross. So this could be one way of modifying this exercise. So let's give another go and see if it works. It's same, it's same, yeah. No, it's the same side, please. Okay, Yip, could you please just try to reach out a bit earlier to get your rec take the shadow a bit earlier and then get ready. Yeah, that's, that's right, that's exactly the way I want. Yeah, that's a good lift. Maybe trying to make your uh, um, when you lift it, you may, maybe trying to more doing like this, then like this, then yes, get a little action. more higher. But not yeah, go over the yeah, width. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll try. Okay, shall we s swap to the other side? Um. Good lift, mm, that was good. Left. 
Yeah, last one, please. Thank you. So, thank you. Well done. It's just in the end, she. Oh, I think most of your uh, lips are quite good. You. Yeah. Um, I think she's a bit. She's struggling with the backhand defense. I, it doesn't look very natural for you to play cross. Um, she doesn't take early enough. Uh, you can pack something home. <laughs> she doesn't take it early enough, and she didn't change her grip. If you want to play cross, you probably want to change it to corner grip rather than the thumb grip, because yeah. then you don't really have the angle to play cross. Yeah, That's yeah. why she's struggling. But definitely, this exercise is going to improve your lift. Yeah, if yeah. you want to have effect shot, uh, if effective shots playing against Sindhu, I would think this exercise would help you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Sorry, can you please wait for the microphone? Yeah. You said at the beginning of the session that it was designed for, it for was yeah. to so learn how to graduate how much lift. Yeah. But how does she get the idea that it's a correct height or not when you've got two players and you're always at the back and you're covering the front? That's correct. That's correct. But That's the concern. We wanted to make this one-on-one, -on -one, but we need to match level, right? The only thing she can tell that uh, my lift is not good enough is that She's too late to the shutter. She doesn't have enough time. So she will see that. Um, we actually, initially we thought maybe we should do one-on-one, -on -one, but we don't know what level of players we're going we're gonna to have. So we have to make the best out of it. And the idea, I, I just want you to get the idea. Yeah? And if both level, if you have, say, similar level of players, and you can do one against one, that would... Uh, be better. We have one more exercise, one against one, because we think that one, it might be easier to do one on one. You can see immediately whether your clears is, the height of your clears is good enough. That's a very good question. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Mm. No is there any other questions uh, for this exercise? And, uh, Okay, and Tony, there we go. Okay, the second exercise is, is more like a one with one. Uh, who's going? The, yeah. Julie, yeah. Okay, and uh, they, this um, one play, they were um, playing and counting attack from one side, her side, to play mostly counting attack, make a lot of speed in the clears. And uh, she will trying to rather give back the good height of the, you know, um, clears back or make a stick smash block shot from the behind to try, the objective of the exercise is to try to turn your, in the pressure position to your uh, attacking position, okay? So, um, can you, um, I try to start. Yeah. Huh? Objective. Solo is objective. Also. Exercise in the quiz. Ah, she, she can make um, smash as well. Attacking, she can make clears and attacking shots and uh, smashes. But not drops. Yeah, Julie if, is allowed to do clears. Yeah. yeah, clears and smashes. So Yip doesn't stand in the back. Yeah. yeah. So she has. She, she needs to she defense. Has, yeah. And then she can counter. Yeah. That's right. Don't, mm. don't attack when she lifts. Yeah. 
Your own defense. Can make a little more pr uh, pressure in it, more speed in the players. Sometimes, yeah. It's good. Yeah. Surely make a bit more. If you could and do a bit more pressure. The idea is actually if when she's make block, yeah, she just <laughs> use her rest and trying to get the shadow really close to the net, but fast into the net, and uh, if you can. Yeah, yeah, it was a good one. Try to block that one. Yes, there you go. Yeah. I know it's difficult for you. you yeah. Just try to find the angle. Uncle and the. Yeah, that's right. Very good. Very okay. Good. Very good. Um, I just uh, stop a little bit. Yeah. So actually, this exercise, the uh, the objective is trying to get off the pressure. So get off the pressure is. Um, how do you think her clears? Do you think it's high enough? Yeah. I think it's a, it can be a little bit higher, right? But not too much high, but a little higher. And um, because she do, when she's play, she will be tall, and then. In this one step, she's really strong and smash. So a little bit more higher. And, but the, the two shots she did block, that can be very useful if we're training the player to doing this kind of strokes to get off the pressure. And it's quite be, very useful. Some of the players doing very good in the old days, like Camila, Gong Zicao. And they can turn off this kind of pressure and uh, get some and get back to the attacking position. So um, the idea is to just try and ride it really to put uh, get good links on the clears, but also very quick block shots and stick. And the, some of the um, attacking shots, um, if did, uh, I saw some of them are too far away, to in the middle of the court. And that's not very useful. But of, of course, I've been mean, taking off the pressure, but um, it can be even better. Um, but this kind of technical need to train it under pressure. Uh, yeah. So you need to train it under pressure. You can use rather this kind of training, rather um, multi-shot phasing. Coaching can play like this 
from the middle of the court or even give pressure on the player from just one side or in, to get the strokes and then using the situation like this kind of situation, pushing really punch clears and uh, trying to get the, the technique down. Yeah, you can make yeah any progression just yeah, start progression from, from the yeah, start from one stroke from one corner to get the technique right, and you ha you can have some fixed patterns that players um, they know what their the next return is so they know uh, where to run to, and then you can make a semi semi pattern exercise that like the one I did before the two corners. Instead, two corners, front court is random, and then smash backhand. Or you can do, as I said, well, drop, drop to forehand, smash to backhand. So, you know, it depends on what you want, want to work on, but try to build up slowly. Yeah, but this is more complex exercise. Yeah. We don't have time to do from scratch, and will tell you guys what to do from scratch. But this is one of the exercises that we also combine the tactic. When you practice this, you have to think your opponent is in Sindhu, how you can keep her twisted and turned. That's one of the things, and find the height. Sometimes if you leave time, you give yourself enough time to move back, or you just move Sindhu uh, to the rear court, but she won't feel really comfortable to attack after she just turned one step, she won't be able to attack. Mm -hmm. So I hope you get the idea. It's quite difficult because we, um, we try, if, yeah, yeah, if we make the exercise for our own players, we know their level, we can uh, modify, uh, modify the exercise a bit better. But we get the players we don't know, then, then I hope you get the idea, but maybe the stroke she did is not Exactly the one, the uh, the one, the quality is not exactly the one we expecting. Well, I hope you get the idea. Yeah, but uh, we're thinking about that because, uh, and in in nowadays, and uh, many players play with a very offensive attacking and shots, and uh, um, we can <clears throat> many uh, coach trying to develop the player to be more strong and more fast and more fast and more fast. But sometimes some of the players, they cannot just go in fast, but also we're trying to find a way to see how we can try to play into our speed and get off their speed and trying to play my speed and my speed which I feel comfortable. I cannot only follow her speed. So trying to cut off the speed and trying to build up another game which is shoot me. So we cannot just play um, fast against this, those kind of player, but also trying the solution, you know, find solution and uh, trying to get, yeah, yeah. another way of playing. And, uh, but uh, th of course, all those things is not new. It's not new, everybody may be knowing it, but uh, I'm thinking it's important we are uh, trying to focus a little, maybe not only speed, but also some using more space uh, in, the, in the higher space. And we can tell play, player to play more intelligently in the game, and get a more variety in tacticals. Yeah, I agree. Just with the lift, say we sometimes warm up with like one, one person's dropping, the other one's lifting. But use this kind of exercise and to let them practice the height. Because this person is lifting, you can, you can let them lift one time flat, one time uh, in the middle, <laughs> the other one is high. So use this simple exercise to develop the players. That's the first step. They need to be able to do that. They handle the one corner, then they will be able to do two corners, then you do random. So this, is, is, this might be better. Yeah. So definitely, I think it's the key for the players to use different height, because I can use this, well, I can tell you about my own experience when I played against Tina Rasmussen. She's very powerful, she's very skilled in the front court, and her attacking shots are really, really strong. I use different height to help me win a lot of matches against her. Especially, I know when I play a little flatter, she will just take one step, that's her rhythm. Take one step and then she's gonna attack. But what if I let her take one and a half step? Will she, will she, will, will she will still attack? Will the smash as, as hard as before, as accurate as before? Before, maybe I can't even touch the shadow. Maybe because of, or I varied the height, I could get it back. And in this way, 
before because she only moves one but once one step back, she can hit the shuttle, that's her rhythm. And if she moves one and a half, that means each step, she will take half a step more. So you work, say, my strategy is, okay, the first, the first set is really, really fast, I can't follow her. But I use the first set to wear her out. I try to keep the rally as long as possible, and then to tire her out. And the second set, she gets a bit tired, and I still use the different height, and her accuracy is going down, and she's going to start making a lot of mistakes. And then I keep my speed, because I counter a lot of shots. My style is not as tiring, because I don't have to attack that much. But if I get the opportunity, I would just do the stick smash blocks and make her run long distance. So that's my strategy. And third set, and she gets tired. And of course, when you get tired, and you, get f you make more mistakes, and you get frustrated, that, that will boost my confident, I find that's, that's good reflection. I think, okay, my tactic is right. I just need to believe in myself. So this is, I think definitely from before, we use a lot of height, different height, the clears to, to counter, to take the pressure out. Yeah? yeah. Do they have any? Yeah. So yeah. Do you have any questions? Still 10 minutes left. So have you got, yeah, questions? Any? Thank you, players. Hi, Stefan from Canada. I guess this is probably more for your first drill. As a final progression, would you consider adding some deception to the drill? Once you feel like the, the, the lifting height is good and, and all the elements are there, would you consider having the player sometimes bring the shuttle in and, and not always take it out in front and kind of vary the, the contact points? You mean from uh, the first exercise? More like the first drill when she's lifting. Instead of always lifting from a, a high contact point or taking it early, would once in a while, would you have her actually bring it in to create some level of deception? And possibly throw off the timing. Yeah, that's that's the initially. The offensive player. That's the plan. Actually, that's very very uh, very good tactic against the Sindhu is that you hold a bit longer. You sometimes you slick. Yeah. Sometimes you you do the deceptions. Yeah. Um, of course, you didn't you didn't see this in the exercise. But I think this is already um, given that she has already practiced all these techniques. She knows what should be, we're talking about the right height, it's hard to say what's well, one meter high or 50 centimeter high, but you need to find the, what is the word, flight uh, traje trajectory, sorry, Tractory. new cap vocabulary. Um, did that answer your question? Not really. Well, can you please repeat your question? So what no, is the progression of the first exercise? Is that right? So I think we could uh, first make it simpler, I would think, make it simpler, more uh, fixed, she's moving only to the forehand side, then we, we keep her twist, and then she's just re repeatedly doing the same exercise, and sometimes I record, because she she's got only one forehand corner, and she will be able to do more deceptions. Okay. <laughs> Uh, hi, uh, Idris Abzal, uh, the UK. Um, <laughs> I'm just uh, wondering just for a, a bit of clarity. Um, you said the presentation was about uh, modern day badminton for women's singles, um, but you've also gone on to talk about ways of combating uh, that style of play. Was, was that the idea, or were you just wanting to look at um, this sort of, so you gave Sindhu as an example, where you just wanted to isolate that and look at attacking badminton or high intensity badminton in, in female or women singles? I didn't get the question. Did you um, understand? I'm, I'm asking um, what, 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 what was the, per just for a bit of clarity, what was the purpose? Were you just looking at high intensity badminton or the, the style, or the modern style of play in badminton in women's singles? Or were you looking at two things? You were looking at um, this high intensity play in women's singles and a way of combating that style of play. What, what was it? We using, um, we combine, okay, I have to, some time. 
Um, definitely at the moment, because we see a lot of punching clears, right? So that's the kind of the trend that everyone is doing. Um, we are trying to think to implement these clears that we used to use in old times that could make the situation better for someone who play against the, actually the tall players, the offensive players, not because we have to use one person to, to make an exercise. So we chose Sindhu. But this exercise could also use for other players. Say if you play against some tall players who are very offensive uh, players, and then you can keep them twist and turn. But right. I think that they can use also for some short players, because everybody have one uh, this high distance that which she feel less comfortable. Like um, um, maybe the even the Japanese player when it's short, but uh, maybe you you make a very flat um, clear. She just feel comfortable to give you a smash because she's used to playing under pressure. But if a little higher. And if you give hit really high, like um, Yamaku, she will just jump in smash. But if some of the height, she will maybe have less, less attacking shot, less comfortable. So this kind of uh, exercise can be used for different players. But uh, each player have different size, height, and if she jumping or not depends how the style of her game. But I think uh, it find the right height of the player to make your game more comfortable. It is, can be useful. I don't know we, did, did we answer your questions? Okay. <laughs> I think <laughs> as we're bang on time, we'll, we'll call it there. Can we just give a round of applause to Wei Wen and Hong Yan, please? Thank you. Like the other presenters, we have a small token of appreciation from the BWF. Thank you very much. So, Wei Wen, for you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and also for the players, we have a little token as well. Um, our two Scottish players, Holly and Julie. And from Hong Kong, yep, thank you very much.